It's time to tell Silent Tom, Phantom Blaster, Diablo, and Raglan Clock to chill out because G Guardians are here. Hello and welcome everyone to the set breakdown of Fighter Selection 2016, which introduces the brand new mechanic of G Guardians. If you don't know what they are, you can check out one of my other videos that I did on the announcement of G Guardians where I explain what exactly they do. But this set contains support for each clan as always, so all 24 clans, not including it, Ranger and Token Ranbu. And it also contains three very important Cray Elementals, so let's get right into them because I feel they are well, some of the most important ones we have seen in the game so far. Starting off, we have the Stride Air Element Sibreeze. It has a very good skill to counter Grade 2 Stall and also to punish people that are Grade Stuck, which is not exactly the best thing, but let's get into the skill. It has a skill in the G Zone that if you have a Grade 3 Vanguard and the number of face up cards in your G Zone is 0 and your opponent Vanguard is a Grade 2 and they did not ride in the preceding turn, then you can kind of bust 2 and discard a card. So, not you don't you would normally discard a Grade 3 or a Stride Fodder to Stride or you know something equal, equal to Grade 3, but here you don't even need to do that. You just discard any card and kind of bust 2 and then you can Stride this card. So, when your opponent is Grade 2 stalling and you're running a deck that relies on G-Break, you go into Sabreeze. So any deck that is more or less reliant on, on G-Break is going to run Sabreeze now, so expect that in most of the decks. Next up we have two G-Guardians that are Cray Elementals and they will be played in many many decks for quite a while. The first one of which is Metal Element Screw. Its skill is, when you G-Guard with it, if the number of face-up cards in your G-Zone is 1 or more, you can discard a card. If you do, this unit gets plus 10k shield, so on top of the 15k shield it already has, it gets another 10, equating to 25k shield. And finally, we have the counter to anything that retires, and also Laurel, which is Dark Element Dismal. It has resist, and the skill that when you guard with it, you can choose one of your guards, and until end of turn, that unit cannot be hit and cannot be targeted by effects of your opponent's cards. So this is really get good against anything that is retire heavy, it's good against DP, so it's generally something that you're probably going to run 2 or 3, maximum 3 I would say in each G-Zone, and most G-Guardians are being run between 5 and 6, or 4 and 6 in most decks. Now, let's get into the actual cards. Usually I do set breakdowns by clan, but because every single clan got two cards in this set, I'm just gonna go through strides first for each clan, and then G-Guardians for each clan. Starting off with the Royal Paladin, we have Divine Knight of Rainbow Brocade, Clotenus. He has a Brave skill, which is a once per turn act. You can count us one, soul bus one, and flip any G-Unit face up. You can search your deck for up to the same number of grade two cards as the number of face up yeah, Clotenus you have in your G-Zone, so let's say you have two Clotenus face up in your G-Zone, you call two Grade 2 Rearguards, and if you do, you call them to separate Rearguard Circles, shuffle your deck, and until end of turn, Clotenus gets the skill that if you have five Rearguards and you're on GB3, he gets plus 10k power and a crit. So he's pretty well-rounded, I quite like him, his skill isn't too costly, and honestly, I quite like him. He's Especially when we have 16... Uh, Especially when we have 16 G unit slots now, I think this is a pretty interesting card to run, and obviously it's super good and brave. Next up we have Lord of Guidance, Wakahirume. She is the Oracle Think Tank Stride, she has a GB2 skill and Oracle, Oracle being that if you have 5 or more cards in your hand, Canvas 1 and Soul Best 1, and Persona Blast. If you do, when she attacks the Vanguard you pay that cost, and then if you do, you draw a card, and you can take a card from your hand and put it on top of your deck. So let's say you can take a heal trigger and put it on top of your deck and then you can drive check it. So there you go, you're basically stacking triggers illegally. Next up we have one of my favorite strides from this set which is Meteo Kaiser Bustard. He is a very nice Nova Grappler stride. He has an auto once per turn. When he attacks you can count bust one and flip any G unit face up. If you do, you choose the same number of your rearguards as the number of face-up Bustard you have in your G-Zone and stand them. So if you have one face-up, you stand one. If you have two face-up, you stand two. And then, if you st if two or more units were stood through this effect, and you have five rearguards, then until the end of that battle, Bustard gets the skill that at the end of the battle, you can count us one and discard two cards. If you do, Bustard restands, and it gets minus two drive checks. So it restands itself, and it restands quite a lot of your field, so this is a super good card, and it's one of the big focuses of my upcoming combo video. For Link Joker, we have Genesis Dragon Trans Else Messiah. When you stride this unit, you can kind of bust one and Persona Flip. If you do, and you have a, a Heart Messiah, 
you can lock all rear guards of all fighters and unlock all locked cards that were locked by anything else than this effect. So let's say you, you had a card locked last turn before you stro you've stridden this, then that card is going to be unlocked but everything else will be locked. That's basically how this card works. For Pale Moon we have Dreamy Axel Millward. Her skill is pretty good and it's also a Magia skill. It's an act once per turn on GB2. You can Soul Blast 1 and flip a G unit face up. If you do, you choose two cards from your soul and call them separate rearguard circles and they get plus 4k each. And at the end of the turn, they go back to your soul, as usually with Magia. Next, you can choose the same number of your units as the number of face-up mill wards you have in your G zone. And until end of turn, those cards that you chose get the skill that when their attack hits, you can choose a card from your soul and call it to rearguard circle with a unit. So if you put it on something that has Magia, then that card is not going to go back and basically we're going to have a permanent call. So this is pretty good in Silver Thorns and it's also pretty good in Magia as well. So it gives you that pressure and nice calling, although the Soul Blast one is a bit not too nice in Pale Moon, but it's alright. For Gear Chronicle, we have Interdimensional Dragon Warp Drive Dragon. He has a Time Leap skill once per turn, an act, Calamus 1, Soul Blast 1, and flip an AG unit face up. Then, you choose the same number of your rearguards as the number of face-up Warp Drive Dragons in your G-Zone and Time Leap them, and then, for the number of rearguards that you time leaped, you choose one of your opponent's rearguard with a grade less than or equal to that number. So if you time leap 3 units, then you can choose one of your opponent's grade 3s, grade 2s, or grade 1s. That's basically how it works, and they have to put it to the bottom of their deck. That's pretty much how this skill works. It's worded a bit weirdly, but it's a pretty good card overall. For Grand Blue, we have Demon Sea Queen Mareed. She is an alright stride, I feel like she could have been a bit better. But she has an act once per turn, you can count us one and, and flip any G unit face up, and also discard a card from your hand. Then you choose up to the same number of normal units from your drop zone as the number of face up marines in your G zone. So as if you have one face up, you choose just one unit in your, in your drop zone. And then the cards that you choose from your drop zone must have the sum of their grades to be four or less. So you can call like two grade twos, or a grade three and a grade one and a grade zero, etc. And then you call them to separate rearguard circles, and increase Marit's power by the sum of the original power of the units called with this effect. So if you call it a 9k and a 7k, she's gonna get plus 16k. That's pretty much how she works. And the final GR is Flower Princess of Perpetual Booty, I mean Summer, Verano. She has a good skill and a very good booty. Her skill is, when you stride her, you can, ca you can Soul Blast 1 and flip any G unit face up, and you also choose a card from your hand and drop zone and then turn them to your deck. Then, after you've stridden her and done this cost, you can choose up to two cards from your hand and call them to separate rearguard circles, and then you can choose as many rearguards as you have uh, face-up Veranos, and you can copy them, and those cards that you copied will get boost. So, good card, good combos, good booty, overall nice stuff. Moving on to the triple rare strides, we start off with Angel Feather's Holy Seraph Zachariel. She's basically an alternative to Blitza for Angel Feather. It's an act, count 1, and flip any G unit face up. Until the end of turn, this unit gets a skill that if you have a card in your damage zone that's face up, all rearguards in your front row get plus 3k, and then if the number of cards in your damage zone is 5, then she gets plus 10k. And those 5 don't have to be necessarily all face up, it can be even all face down if you want. For Shadow Paladin, we have Dark Dragon Distress Dragon. It has a pretty hefty cost. It's once per turn, Kamas 3, Soul Blast 3, and flip a G unit face up. You choose any number of your rearguards and retire them, and your opponent must retire the same number of rearguards as you retired of your own. And then, if the number of rearguards that was retired from both fields by this effect is 6 or more, you draw 2 cards, counter charge 1, soul charge 1, and the unit gets plus 20k. Don't forget for this card that if you retire something like a David, it's not gonna count as 2 units retired. For Gold Paladin, we have Golden Knight of Incandescence, Ebraucus. When you stride him, you can count as one soul best one, look at top two of your deck, choose one, call it to an open rearguard circle, and put the other card on the bottom of your deck in any order. It's basically an on-stride top deck call. That's pretty much what it is. For Genesis, we have Beast Slayer Military Deity Tier. As an act skill, once per turn you can Soul Blast 3 and look at the top card of your deck, put it on the top or bottom of your deck, and until end of turn he gets a skill. When you drive check a grade 1 or greater card, you can Soul Charge 3. This can potentially Soul Charge 9 or 0, so it kind of depends on how lucky you get, actually. For Kagero, we have Flame Emperor Dragon King Irresist Dragon. When its attack hits a Vanguard, you can Soul Blast 1. If you do, you choose one of your opponent's units, and you retire all of your opponent's rearguards in the same row as that unit. Pretty standard Kagero stuff. 
For Nobatama, we have R Rikudo Stealth Dragon Gon Rakan. When you stride him, your opponent must choose two of their rearguards, and any rearguards that they do not choose get binded face up. If three or more cards were bound, your opponent has to choose two cards from their bind zone and put them into their drop zone, and at the end of the turn, your opponent puts the cards that are still in the bind zone into their hand. For Tajikaze, we have Destruction Tyrant Great Gigant. He has an Engorge ability, and the other skill is when he becomes Engorged, he gets plus 5k for each unit retired for his Engorge ability. And if the number of units retired for his Engorge ability is 3 or more, you draw a card. It's sort of an alternative, it's sort of an alternative to the other Tajikaze Stride, which would retire instead of drawing a card, so there's that. For Murakumo, we have Ambush Demon Stealth Dragon Onibibu Radar. It also has Harakiri in its flavor text, just saying. Anyway, his skill is when you stride him, you choose a card from your hand, call it to rearguard circle, and choose any of your rearguards and give it plus 2k and the ability to attack from the back row, if it attacks a vanguard. For Narukami, we have a card with a typo. If you read the red text, there's an opponent with just 1p. Anyway, this is Conquering Supreme Dragon Voltex Zapper Dragon. Has a Thunder Strike 3 ability. When he attacks the Vanguard, he gets plus 10k, and the skill that the, at the end of the battle you can count as 1. If you do, for every 2 cards in the opponent's bind zone, you can choose that many of their rear guards, retire them, and bind them. So it's basically, it's good for the Thunder Strike deck and nothing else. For my clan, Dimension Police, we have Super Cosmic Hero X Phoenix. Many people will say he's bad and his art is bad, I beg to differ, I think he's actually alright and his art looks pretty cool as well. Anyway, at the end of the battle that he attacked the Vanguard, if his power is 35k or greater and the attack did not hit, you can almost want to draw a card. I think this card is actually alright, I don't think it deserves as much hate as, his, as it has been getting from both DP players and not DP, DP players alike. For Spike Brothers, we have Super Heavy Chariot, Tiger Centurion. As a once per turn skill, you can count as 1, choose any number of your rearguards with a charge ability, and, become, and they become charging until end of turn, and then you choose up to 5 of your units that were not chosen for the charging effect, and they get plus 2k. So an example would be, for example, you choose your two front rows that both have charge, you charge them, and all three of your back rows that don't have charge, well then you, they just get plus 2k. It's pretty simple. For Dark Irregulars, we have Rebellious Retainer of Fresh Blood, Frederick. He has an interesting skill. You can choose a card from your hand and put it into your soul, and he gets plus 1k for each card in your soul until end of turn. So let's say you've got 5 soul, then use his ability to put 1 in the soul, then he gets plus 6. And then you can keep doing that until his power is 10k or more. So basically how it works is that if the total power increase with this effect during this turn is 10k or more, then all breakers in your front row will get plus 5k until end of turn, and you cannot use that ability anymore. So basically you spam it until you've gained plus 10k if you have enough cards in hand, but knowing the Dark Regulars, you probably won't, but you know, it's an interesting stride, I quite like it. For Bermuda Triangle, we have Lucky Rise Elprina. Her skill is a once per turn soul best 1 and return 2 of your regards to your hand, so instead of being an on stride soul best 1 return 2, she's in act, which is much better in my opinion. For Aqua Force, we have a very good stride in Marine General of Heavenly Silk Christos. So, he has a wave first time only, so only when you attack him with, for the first time. When he attacks the Vanguard, you count must 1 and give your front row rear guards plus 2k. And the skill that when they attack for the third or fourth time, if they hit a Vanguard, you can draw a card. This is pretty abusable and I quite like it. For Mega Colony, we have Wildfire Mutant Deity Staggle Dipper. He has an act once per turn, you can count must 1 and flip any G unit face up. Then you choose up to 3 of your units, and until end of turn they get power, plus 1k for each of your opponent's units in rest. So, this can potentially give you plus 7k if the opponent uses a legion, which is pretty, pretty impressive. And the final stride is Great Nature's Omniscience Dragon, Crimthurst. At the end of the battle that he attacked the Vanguard, you can soul blast 1, if you do, you give one of your guys plus 4k. Then, you can choose to give the same unit another plus 4k, so it gets plus 8k, but then at the end of turn you'll have to retire it if you give the second plus 4k. And then, if the power of the unit chosen with this effect is 20k or greater, you can draw a card. So it has, if I understand it correctly, it has to have 20k after you give the second buff. That's kind of how I understand it. Moving on to the G Guardians, we're gonna go through these pretty fast because these effects are quite simple compared to the other G Guardians we'll be getting in the future. For Royal Paladin, we have Holy Dragon Laser Guard Dragon. When you, G when you guard with him, if you have at least one grade 2 rear guard, he gets plus 5k shield. For OTT, we have a new Ichibyoshi. When you guard with him, if the number of cards in your hand is 3 or more, he gets plus 5k shield. 
For Angel Feather, we have Holy Seraph Ordefiel. When you guard with her, if the number of cards in your damage zone is 4 or more, she gets plus 5k shield. For Shadows, we have Dark Knight Ludwig. When you guard with him, you can choose one of your grade 1 or less rearguards and move it to your guardian circle. This is pretty bad. For Gold Paladin, we have Sacred Heaven Prayer Master Rhea. When you guard with her, if you have at least 2 rearguards, she gets plus 5k shield. For Genesis, we have a very good G Guardian in Goddess of the Seven Colors Iris. When you guard with her, you can choose up to three cards from your drop zone and put them into your soul. If three cards were put this way, you, she gains plus 5k shield. This way you're actually making advantage through guardian, this is very good. For Kagero, we have Flame Emperor Dragon King Asil Orb Dragon. When you guard with him, if your opponent has four or less rear guards, he gets plus 5k shield. This isn't that good because it relies on your opponent. For Nubitama, we have Jinx Stealth Hermit Abu Dataishi. When you guard with him, if the number of cards in your opponent's hand is 6 or less, this unit gets plus 5k shield in the end of that battle. Again, this relies on your opponent, so it's not that great, and it's also on the opponent's turn even, so it's really not that amazing. For Tachikaze, we have Iron Armored Cancellor, Demer Phalanx. When you guard with him, if the number of your rearguards is less than or equal to the number of your opponent's rearguards, he gets plus 5k shield. Again, it relies on your opponent, but this time not as much, so it's actually alright. For Murakuma, we have a pretty nice one in Ambush Demon Stealth Fiend Hogan Wing. When you guard with him, you can choose one of your grade 1 or greater rear guards, copy it and call it to the Guardian Circle, and then shuffle your deck. But then at the end of, of that battle, when the card that you call to the Guardian Circle would be put into the drop zone, you put it on the bottom of your deck instead. That way you don't lose that card despite having cloned it. It's a pretty good G Guardian. For Narukami, we have a Thunder Strike 1 as the condition to get 5k. I think that's pretty bad, honestly. For Nova Grappler, we have Righteous Superhuman Blue Prison. When you guard with him, if you have more or the same amount of damage as your opponent, it gets plus 5k shield. It's, again, relies on your opponent. I don't like that. For DP, we have Enigmin Patriot. It's probably one of the better G Guardians from this set. When you guard with it, if your opponent's attacking unit's power is 20k or greater, it gets plus 5k shield. Most of the time when you're G-Guardian, it's gonna be against an attack that's 20k or more, so this is basically always gonna have 20k shield. For Link Joker, we have a G-Guardian that a lot of people have been complaining about in Death Star Vader, Demon Maxwell. When you G-Guard with it, you can lock one of your own back rows. If you do, he gets plus 5k shield. Not that great because only really Messiah can make use of this. It's a Star Vader and Star Vader absolutely hates this, so yeah, not that great. For Spike Brothers, we have excellent cheerleader Aerie. When you guard with her, if you have three or less rearguards, she gets plus 5k. Good skill. For Dark Irregulars, we have full Stark Wings Agrat Bat Machlat. It's, uh, yes. When you guard with her, you can Soul Charge 2, and if the number of cards in your soul is six or more, she gets plus 5k shield. Very good because you make advantage by Guardian. Another good G Guardian is Chainsaw Megatrick Furnival. When you guard with it, you can look at the top three cards of your deck, put one into the soul and the others of the bot on the bottom of the deck in any order. If the card that you put into your soul is a grade one or greater, this unit gets plus 5k shield. Good stuff because you make advantage in your opponent's turn. One of the best G Guardians is Gear Chronicles Retroactive Time Maiden Uluru. When you guard with her, you can choose one normal unit and one trigger unit from your drop zone and put them on the bottom of your deck. If both cards were put on the bottom of the deck that way, she gets plus 5k shield. This way you can basically, you drop the heal to guard with her, and then you immediately recycle it. It's pretty great. For Grand Blue, we have Eclipse Dragon Hulk, Deep Corpse Dragon. When you guard with it, you can mill two. If you do, it gets plus 5k shield. Good stuff, because for Grand Blue, it's good to mill. For Bermuda Triangle, we have Sailor's Medley Nasha. When you guard with her, you can choose one card from your hand and reveal it. If you have the same grade on your field as the one revealed, then she gets plus 5k shield. So let's say you reveal a grade 2, if you have at least one grade 2 rear guard, then you'll get the 5k. For Aqua Force, we have Guard Leader of Sky and Water, Flotia. When you guard with her, if the attack you're guarding against was the second or first battle of that turn, she gets plus 5k shield. Not so good against old decks, like actually the mirror match, but in general she's fairly alright, since uh, it'll be good against a lot of decks that attack with the big power lane first. For Meg Colony, we have Dream Mutant Deity Scara Scarabagus. When you guard with it, if your opponent has at least two units in rest, then it gets plus 5k shield. For Great Nature, we have Immortality Professor Kundalini. When you guard with it, you can give your one of your rearguards the skill that at the end of each turn it gets retired and you cannot charge one uh, until end of turn. If you do give that skill, this unit gets plus 5k shield. Not that great because you have to sack your own unit in your opponent's turn, so mm, not, not the biggest fan. 
And the final G Guardian for Neo Nectar is Sacred Tree Dragon, Rain Breath Dragon. When you guard with it, you can choose a card from your hand and call it to Rigor Circle and it gets Resist. If you call that card, the Rain Breath Dragon gets plus 5k shield. This is really good because you can combo off of it with stuff like Thuria and Katrina and so on. All in all, this set is really good because it supports everything, so why would it not be good? Uh, a lot of G-Guardians are good, a lot of them are a bit meh, and all the strides are pretty much good, some of them not so much. But overall, I'm quite happy with this set, and I think a lot of people are. It's gonna sell shitloads, it's gonna sell so much, it's gonna be basically the Cray Elemental G-Guardians everybody needs, Sabris everybody needs, and a lot of the strides a lot of people need as well, so this is a really really good set, and it's a very good decision by Bushiro to print it, and I'm very thankful that they did. That's gonna be pretty much it from me for today. Thank you very much for watching if you watched to the very end. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.